Alright, so now let's talk about this problem. This problem's kind of interesting because when I first thought about it, I was like, wow, I really have no idea where to start with this, and I have no idea how to go about it. Um, but then I talked to someone about it, and then I realized, oh, this is actually really easy. Well, I mean, it's one of those where it's like really easy when you know the answer, which is like how all of math is. Um, it's like really easy when you know the answer, but it's impossible if you don't know the answer. Okay, so anyways, um, we have this thing called a Rayleigh quotient. And so a number is a Rayleigh quotient of A if and only if it is a diagonal entry of Q star AQ for some unitary matrix Q. Okay, so to say that a number Z is a Rayleigh quotient of A, I don't know if it's like explicitly defined, but you can sort of guess that what this means is that there is some vector x such that z is a Rayleigh quotient of a with respect to the vector x. Because the way that Rayleigh quotients work is you take, it's a function of both a matrix a and a vector x, and it's given by this formula. r of, Q, r of x is x star ax over x star x. Okay, so anyways, um, the main idea here is okay so we we know that um we know that Rayleigh we know that the Rayleigh quotient of a matrix A and an eigenvalue lambda no if you take the Rayleigh quotient of a matrix and one of its eigenvectors then that will give you an eigenvalue but it will give you an eigenvalue corresponding to the eigenvector that you plugged in. Okay, so um, so we can use that to our advantage and that's actually really useful in this Q star AQ because you just put the X into that Q and Q has to be a unitary matrix and so you just take this matrix, this eigenvector, and you extend it to an orthonormal basis. Okay, so for the forwards direction, suppose Z is a really quotient. So, suppose that x prime is a vector such that r of x prime is z. We know that this means that z is an eigenvalue of a with corresponding eigenvector x prime. And we want x prime to have norm 1. So let's set x to be x prime divided by the 2 norm of x prime. Because when we, when we do the, um, this thing down here, when we do um, x star x, that's basically the dot product, and so we want the dot product, uh, so it's a dot product, and so it's a two norm, and so yeah, we want it to be a unit vector. But we also, another reason for that is that we want it, we want Q to be unitary, and so all of its columns need to have norm one with respect to the dot product. So anyways, so let X and then Q2 through QM be an orthonormal basis for CM, and let Q be the unitary matrix whose first column is X and whose ith column is QI. So you basically take this orthonormal basis and put all the vectors together and get a unitary matrix. Um, so yeah, so it's unitary. And then the first column of AQ is going to be A times X, right? Because Here, the first column of AQ. Right, yeah, the first column of AQ. It, it, it's it's sort of tough to look at these, and it, it's it's sort of something that you can get better at over time. Like the more and more you more you work with matrices, the more and more steps you can do at once. So if we imagine this as A times X times Q1, or this would be Q2 and then all the way to QM. So this whole thing here is capital Q, and I've just written it as each of these things is like one of the columns. Then if you imagine what happens when you do this matrix multiplication, we end up with AX, and then AQ2, all the way to AQM. And each of these AQIs and the AX, these are all columns of this product matrix. So we see that this first column here, this is just AX. So the first column of AQ is AX, which is ZX. 
And therefore, if you do a similar thing, but with um, Q star AQ, so this is going to be, so let's see here, so we're gonna have Q1 star, no, we're gonna have X star, then Q2 star, then all the way down to QM star. If we take this and multiply by AX, AQ2, AQM, then if we look at the 1, 1 entry, we're going to have X star AX, and then the 1, 2 entry is going to be X star AQ2, etc., etc., but the only thing we care about is this thing, because that's going to be X star AX. But we know, wait, right. And we know that AX is ZX, so this is actually X star ZX, so this is X star ZX, and this is X star ZQ2, etc., etc. Okay, so it's X star ZX, but then we can pull the Z out front, and then we have Z times X star X, and X star X is the dot product of Z of, of um, X with itself, which is the two norm squared, and the two norm is one, so the two norm squared is one, and so we just end up with z. So the so the one one entry of this matrix is z, and thus z is a diagonal entry of q star a q. And of course, q is a unitary matrix. For the reverse direction, let z be a diagonal entry of this matrix, where q is unitary. Um, let's say that z is the i i entry of a. So it's, uh, it's the ith entry on the diagonal. And we'll label the columns of Q, Q1 through Qm. Then we know that since Q is unitary, Q1 through Qm forms a, an orthonormal basis for um, Cm. And what else do we know? We also know by the same um, argument that we did here, the ith entry of Q star Aq which is z, is going to be of the form qi star aqi. And so now let's look at the Rayleigh quotient of qi. It, we're going to have q star aqi over qi star q... No, these should be i's and not 1's. Whoops. But that's not too big of a deal. So... QI star AQI over QI star QI. And so on top we have QI star AQI, which we just proved to Z. And on bottom we have QI star QI, which is the two norm of QI squared. But because Q1 through QM is an orthonormal basis, we know that that's going to be 1. So this is just Z over 1, which is Z. And thus, Z is a Rayleigh quotient of A. And so we've proven both directions, and so now we're done with this exercise.